The main symptoms of ADHD is attention deficit or distractibility, hyperactivity and impulsivity. And all of these symptoms are basically because of a dopamine deficiency in the brain. Now dopamine is just a neurotransmitter. It's one of the chemicals in the brain that brings messages from one brain cell to the other brain cell. And there can be many reasons why there is a deficiency which we don't need to discuss. So the obvious medical treatment for these symptoms would be medication that one way or another increases dopamine in the brain. And there are two categories of medication that do this, one directly and one indirectly. The group that does it directly are called stimulants, and they are the bad boys who always get the bad publicity. But they've been around for a long time. They were first made in 1944, and they were commercially available in the 1950s, so they've been around 60 plus years. We have a lot of experience. And the stimulant is called methylphenidate. It is available in many different formulations in South Africa. In fact, there's at least three, and there's also a few uh, generic products. And they are highly effective in addressing those three deficits, that of attention deficit, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. The reason they've had such bad publicity is because a lot of side effects have been described and people are obviously cautious about using them. But they are very effective. They are between 88 to 114 percent effective for this condition. And if you don't have any major side effects, then they are extremely safe to use. In fact, even if you have side effects, they are safe to use. Probably one of the safest medications yet people are very reluctant to use them. They have definite side effects, and the biggest side effect of these stimulants is appetite suppressant effects. And that makes parents very unhappy, because parents often equate an eating child with a happy child, and it is very disconcerting if your child does not eat when taking the medication. It is interesting that it's not the big, obese, ADHD children that stop eating. It's always the scrawny, tiny little ones that stop eating, and that's quite disconcerting. I think any child who loses more than two kilograms after being put on medication, you should have to stop it unless you can work out ways of dealing with the appetite suppression. If appetite suppression is a major problem, then it's a good idea to stop it over the weekends so that they can eat. And I think the new fandangled way of dealing with it is by giving them protein shakes. It is very modern, children like it, and we try and give them meal replacements as well to try and keep the calories and the protein going. We are concerned about protein intake in these children because they are big starch eaters generally, if they eat at all, and they do not like particularly to eat um, protein. So we like to add that. The other major side effect, and it's not common though, is to have some sleep disorders. Children with ADHD generally have sleep disorders. They take a long time to fall asleep, but once they sleep, they usually sleep well. Uh, on medication, they may even take longer to fall asleep. I think it's the emotional side effects of these medications that bother parents. There definitely is a kind of an introversion when you use stimulants. Children seem a bit more blunted socially. Again, I suppose that is what people refer to when they talk about zombie effect. No child should be a zombie. If they are, then the medication's too strong or they can't use it. But it does have a little bit of a blunting effect, something that teenagers really don't like. And that's the reason why teenagers often stop their medication. But if that is not severe, then we can live with it. The other thing is that it does disappear with time. As the children use the medication, these effects do decrease. Another side effect is that some children can become very emotional on these medications. Now, when you embark on treatment with stimulants, it's usually a two-week trial. The first week is really to look at the side effects. The second week is to look at effects. A child that never stops crying for the whole of the two weeks cannot continue on medication. And the point I want to make is that a two-week trial is always imperative to look at the effects and the side effects. And if it doesn't fit your child, you shouldn't continue. But the trial is incredibly important because you will not know what the effects or side effects are 
unless you've tried it. So which children should be medicated then? It's children that despite being in a good school, despite having normal intelligence, despite having interventions, maybe from therapists, do not cope socially or educationally because of their attention deficit. And that is the only rule in the rule book that says when you start medication. We try not to start children too young because the medication is only registered from the age of six, but between five and six is still fairly safe to use and most of the children with ADHD that have developmental delay for some other reason will be on medication in that time. The second hump is really grade three. Many children are not diagnosed with ADHD initially, but in grade three it becomes an issue because of language issues and many children are only started in grade three. So how long should one use the medication? The science clearly shows that you should use it for at least three years. In three years time, we can teach the brain new tricks. We actually can even structurally change the brain to create more dopamine for its function. If it hasn't been successful within three years, you probably are going to continue for longer and then you need to use it as long as it's necessary. If you start it too late, like after the age of nine, you will always have an effect, but you will not change the structure of the brain. The golden time is between six and nine years of age if you are going to intervene and have any long-lasting benefits. I think there's another issue about dopamine that we, I should mention here now that is not so clear. But there is another function of dopamine in the brains of children with ADHD that is crucial to their functioning. There is an area in the brain, it's called the nucleus accumbens, which is not important to remember, but that area is the area that makes you feel good about yourself. It is the area that has to do with self-stroking, self-perception, self-worth. And that area does not work in children with ADHD for exactly the same reasons as they have attention deficit, hyperactivity and an impulsivity. It also requires dopamine for you to have these functions. So inherently, children with ADHD have very low self-esteem. It is a biochemical self-esteem. It is not because they are failures. It's not because you haven't praised them enough. In fact, we praise children with ADHD all day long because we actually take over the role of the nucleus accumbens and tell them they're good and they're great and they're doing well because they have no self-esteem at all. If we don't medicate them before the age of nine, they will never develop the self-esteem. The self-esteem needs early intervention medically. And so another imperative reason why, if you're going to need medication, get in there early. And by early, I mean at least the age of six before the age of nine and treat them because otherwise there are long-term psychological and psychiatric implications for not treating people with ADHD. The second group of medication work indirectly. They actually increase norepinephrine, but indirectly also increase dopamine and they are called non-stimulants. The term non-stimulant just means as a, is a medical chemical term. It doesn't mean that a non-stimulant can't stimulate you. Some people who use non-stimulants can feel palpitations, they can sweat, they can become red, they can have all sorts of excitatory functions, but that is not impossible because the medication has some stimulatory effects, but a stimulant in medicine just refers to medication who increase dopamine, and so increasing norepinephrine is not considered a stimulant. These medications are very different to stimulants. Stimulants work within 20 minutes to 30 minutes, and depending on the medication you use, can work 4 hours, 8 hours, or 12 hours, and also depending on your metabolism. That's not true for non-stimulants. Non-stimulants take weeks to reach its maximum effect, so it can be take 6 to 8 weeks, and so your trial can, has to be much longer than the 2 weeks for stimulants, and also it then works 24 hours a day, so there's no on and off, in and out, it works consistently. And for some children, this is a much better idea, especially children who have rebound. Now, rebound on a stimulant means that when it wears out, you are very, very impossible. You're emotional, you're crying, you're angry, you're irritable for about an hour. And for some parents, that's really tough to deal with, especially late in the afternoon when everybody's quite tired. This is never the case with a non-stimulant because they work 
consistently and persistently. A bit like an antidepressant, or they are not antidepressants. The good side effect of the non-stimulants is that they also decrease anxiety a little bit. So your anxious ADHD child may do better on a non-stimulant than on a stimulant. It doesn't have any effects on diet or on appetite, but it can cause heartburn, which for some children is unacceptable, and for some children might feel sleepy during the day on this medication. Those are the two major side effects. If there are side effects on either of these medications, one may have to manipulate the dose, but the longer the children use them, usually the less side effects they have. If the side effects are severe, I suggest that you stop the medication and not continue and probably try an alternative medication. These medications can have profound effect on your child's functioning socially as well as educationally, but it doesn't take the place of good education and good behavioral modification.